On March 4, 2011, Olivia Kale was in high spirits when she visited her brother's home in West Mifflin, Pennsylvania. The 19-year-old eagerly shared with her brother, Lance Kale, that she was heading to Miami, Florida with her boyfriend, 22-year-old Alexander Lorenzi. Although Olivia had her own apartment in nearby Mount Washington, she had previously stayed with her brother, and some of her belongings were still there. As she packed clothes and shoes for the trip, she mentioned that Alexander was covering all the expenses. After finishing her packing, Olivia bid farewell to Lance. Watching the couple drive away in Alex's car, Lance had no inkling that this would be the last time he saw his sister. The past year had been particularly difficult for Olivia. Her father Gerald passed away at the age of 56 in October 2010, and Olivia was deeply affected by his loss. According to her brother Jeremy Kale, she had a hard time putting her life back together after their father's death. Along with grieving for her father, Olivia also went through a breakup with her longtime boyfriend Zach Zillis after three years together. Recently though, Olivia seemed to be improving. She had moved into an apartment with one of her best friends and had begun dating Alexander. Olivia's mother Christine Didano was taken aback when she found out that her daughter was planning another trip to Florida with Alexander. The couple had just returned to Pennsylvania on March 3rd after a visit to Miami in late February. Confused and concerned, Christine called Olivia's cell phone, hoping to persuade her not to go back to Florida. However, Olivia did not answer the call and never got back to her mother. During her first trip to Florida, Olivia had immediately called Lance upon landing in Miami to let him know she had arrived safely. Lance anticipated a similar call when she arrived in Florida for the second time, but it never came. Despite his numerous attempts to reach her, all his calls went straight to voicemail. Over the following two weeks, Olivia's loved ones made dozens of calls to her cell phone, leaving messages pleading for her to return their calls, but she remained unresponsive. Despite Olivia's phone seeming to be dead or turned off, her friends and family continued calling daily, only to hang up when it went straight to voicemail. Panic set in on March 19th when Olivia's phone was disconnected due to non-payment. Realizing something was terribly wrong, her family contacted the Allegheny County Police and reported Olivia missing. Olivia's loved ones had every reason to be concerned. Detectives quickly discovered that Alexander had returned from Florida on March 16th, without Olivia. While he refused to speak with the police, his friends reported that he had given conflicting accounts of Olivia's whereabouts. Some were told that she had chosen to stay in Florida, while others heard that he had dropped her off at her Mount Washington apartment. Alexander avoided all contact with Olivia's family and friends. After repeated attempts to reach him, he disconnected his cell phone, leaving them with no way to contact him. Christine was convinced that Alexander knew her daughter's whereabouts, but he continued to evade the police. Detectives visited his last known address, where his brother directed them to Alexander's attorney. The lawyer refused to disclose his client's location and informed them that Alexander had nothing to say to the investigators. Detectives admitted they were unsure if Olivia had ever reached Florida. They contacted all jails and hospitals in Miami and the surrounding areas but were unable to locate her. Olivia's information was entered into a national database for missing persons and law enforcement agencies along the East Coast were alerted to be on the lookout. On March 30th, Allegheny County Police investigators announced the arrest of Alexander after a search of his residence uncovered three guns, marijuana and cocaine. One of the guns, a 22 caliber pistol, had been reported stolen in a Bethel Park, Pennsylvania home invasion. Alexander was charged with receiving stolen property and possession of cocaine and marijuana with intent to distribute. Although these charges were unrelated to Olivia's disappearance, Alexander remained uncooperative and refused to answer any questions. His lawyer stated only that his client had a Second Amendment right to possess firearms. Over the following days, officials executed six additional search warrants targeting various vehicles and properties linked to Alexander. During a search of his garage, investigators discovered several spent shell casings, a pink tote bag later identified as Olivia's, and a sheet stained with what appeared to be blood. They also searched a pickup truck belonging to Raymond Paul Lorenzi Excavating, a company owned by Alexander's father. Inside the truck, detectives found several shell casings, a jewelry box containing earrings, 
and a plane ticket to Fort Myers, Florida. Cell phone records showed that Alexander had been in Florida from March 9th to March 15th, but there was no evidence indicating that Olivia had been with him. Christine remained convinced that Alexander was withholding information about Olivia's whereabouts. She pointed out that several items of Olivia's clothing had been found during the search of Alexander's property and demanded answers. He holds the key to my daughter's whereabouts and what has been done to her. Her clothes are at his house. Where is she? Despite her plea, neither Alexander nor anyone from his family reached out to her. On April 1st, police arrested Olivia's ex-boyfriend Zach on an outstanding bench warrant. While in custody, he was interviewed about Olivia's disappearance and denied any involvement. He also spoke to the media, expressing that he still loved Olivia and would never harm her. His arrest was unrelated to Olivia's case, and he emphasized to reporters that he was not considered a suspect. The investigation saw little progress over the next few months. In August 2011, police returned to Alexander's residence after his new girlfriend accused him of beating her dog to death. While at the home, investigators found cocaine and $6,000 in cash. When they announced Alexander's arrest, he assaulted a police officer. He was booked on these new charges but remained silent about Olivia's disappearance. By March 2012, Olivia had been missing for a year, and her family was still in the dark about her fate. Her loved ones held a candlelight vigil to mark the somber anniversary, praying for answers. Christine acknowledged that it had been a heartbreaking year for the family, but they were trying to hold on to hope that Olivia was still alive. Although Alexander still refused to cooperate with the police and had not contacted Olivia's family, his mother Jeannie Lorenzi showed up on the night of the candlelight vigil. Jeannie did not participate in the vigil but remained outside with various members of the news media. She insisted that Alexander had nothing to do with Olivia's disappearance and expressed frustration that his name was always associated with the case. My son has never been charged, never been arrested, nothing whatsoever to do with this, she told reporters. Christine pointed out that neither Alexander nor any of his family members had ever tried to reach out to Olivia's family, questioning Jeannie's motives for speaking out only during the vigil. Jeannie made it clear that she had no intention of speaking to Christine and had come solely to address the reporters she knew would be there. Alexander's ongoing refusal to cooperate with detectives caused the investigation to stall and by 2012, it was clear that the case was going cold. In January 2013, authorities announced their belief that Olivia might have been a victim of sex trafficking. This gave her family and friends hope that she could still be alive, but the thought of what she might be enduring was heartbreaking. In May 2013, officials conducted a search covering more than 40 acres of land surrounding the Allegheny County Airport. Detectives stated that a combination of cell phone record data and interviews with dozens of people led them to believe that Olivia's body might be located in that area. More than 80 people participated in the search, and although they uncovered several bones, none were determined to be human. Olivia's case soon faded from the headlines. Six years after her disappearance, Christine noted that the family was still struggling to cope with her absence. She told reporters that her daughter was never out of her mind or heart, but the uncertainty of Olivia's fate was hard for the family to bear. You have to learn to live with no answers, she said. Olivia Kale was 19 years old when she went missing in 2011. She has blue-green eyes and brown hair, and at the time of her disappearance, she was five feet tall and weighed 110 pounds. She was last seen wearing jeans and a black shirt along with either sneakers or UGG boots. She wears a diamond nose stud and has a tattoo of a blue lily on her right hip. If you have any information about Olivia, please contact the Allegheny County Police at 412-470-1300.